Hello. Welcome. Um, it's been a while since I made a video. This is going to be... I'm going to read a cosmic weather report from... that I've just posted on a new website that I've got up and running, um, which is an extension of the Universal Spiritual Community Facebook page. So now there's a website as well which is still a... I haven't purchased a domain so it is a... it's actually at moonfruit.com so I'm gonna read the um, cosmic weather report that I just wrote which is sort of inspired by this book which I'm also going to talk about um, which I've almost finished reading <laughs> which is um, uh, written by Devamrita Swami uh, um, guru from the Hare Krishna um, religion or spiritual path and I thought it'd be interesting just because it's such a good book to just go through and talk about it a little bit um, but yeah I'll just start with some chanting as per usual I guess so Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Jarana Shilasari Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jai Shri Krishna Jai Tanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shivasari Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jai Shri Krishna Jai Kanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shivasari Gora Bhakta Vrinda So that's the Maha Mantra in the Panchatattva Mantra both um, prescribed mantras for this age of Kali Yuga which is what I'm going to talk about now um, so this is a cosmic weather report it's sort of done with humor as I like to do things with humor um, it's done sort of as though it was a an actual weather report I'm probably starting um, some of Devan Rita's humours wearing off on me after reading his book I've just been reading it constantly for the past few days and um, so anyway this is a cosmic weather report this is it um, it's Mukunda Das so M-U-K-U-N-D-A Das dot moonfruit dot com that's the that's the website address I could do another uh, video just doing taking a tour or you can just check it out for yourself it's sort of work in progress sort of a fun kind of interactive kind of website so this is the cosmic weather report 
Cosmic weather report is, we are in a spiritual winter, Kali Yuga, 432,000 years long and only 5,000 years down. It's not all bad news though, the winter's tough but all you need is the umbrella of the supreme shelter of Krishna in the form of hearing, chanting, remembering, serving, deity worship, following instructions, making friends with God and complete surrender, any or all the above. Besides that, the practice of compassion, abstinence from meat-eating, austerity, abstinence from intoxicants, cleanliness, abstinence from illicit sex, and truthfulness, abstinence from gambling. That's your umbrella. It's quite a thunderstorm, so don't shriek at the preparations. Forecast is predominance of cheating, lying, sloth, sleepiness, violence, depression, lamentation, bewilderment, fear, and poverty, People becoming short-sighted, unfortunate, gluttonous, lustful, and poverty-stricken. Women becoming unchaste. Cities dominated by thieves. Vedic knowledge contaminated by speculative interpretations of atheists. Political leaders that virtually consume their citizens and intellectuals and priests that are only concerned with their bellies and genitals. People's minds will always be agitated, in fact, people will come to appear like ghostly haunted creatures. Law and justice will be based on power. Wealth alone will be considered the sign of a man's good birth. Success in business will depend on deceit. Those lacking money will be judged unholy, and merely filling the belly will be conceived as a proper goal in life, etc., etc., However, despite the 432,000 year winter, we will be experiencing a short 10,000 year golden age, which you'll be happy to hear began some 300 years ago with the return of Jesus Christ, in the form of Emanuel Swedenborg's books along with many other traditions associated prophecies, such as the Rainbow Warriors of Native America, the Lotus Stem Prophecy and Taoist Cultivation, the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra following Lord Chaitanya's incarnation, and the coming of the age of Aquarius as prophesied in the Sikh tradition of Kundalini Yoga as taught by Yogi Bhajan, among others. So fear not, like Tor once said, learn to swim. <clears throat> and then would be the, um, the song of... Um, Anima from Tool, which is what that quote's from. So that's the cosmic weather report for the next, well, hundreds of years or thousands of years. So, um, yeah, just looking at this book here, um, <coughs> it's a really good summary of, um, it's still very current, even though I'm not sure when it was first published. Um, but it's still totally relevant, and um, it covers all sort of a lot of what would be considered like hot topics or whatever, especially in spiritual circles. All the different main subjects that you would want to sort of. Um, have a clue on what the story is or what the real deal is in each one of those areas. Um, Devon Reader's done it. It's um, it's a little bit like surfing the internet reading this book because a lot of um, a lot of the subject areas are things that you would actually if if you were looking for stuff like that you'd probably search on the internet and look for those specific subjects. And the, you would definitely find stuff as well, because for each one of these subjects is kind of an area of interest, uh, quite popular in in certain circles, I guess, or whatever. Um, but the good thing about the book is actually that he's really done a lot of like research and stuff, and he's coming from the authority of the Vedas themselves so you're getting sort of like the best even even though you're only taking a short look at each subject you're getting like some of the best insights into each one of those subjects as he goes through so um, for
for instance, um, one a major theme in the book is um, the existence of an ancient civilization in our distant past. So, um, a lot of it's taken at the angle from what is commonly accepted within, I guess, what you could call popular culture, or or quite often he's taking it from the viewpoint of what, say, scholarly authorities say or something, like so-called authorities who are scholars who give the sort of official line, whether those scholars are in, he's talking about, um, Indologists, people who study the Indian tradition, or if he's talking about scientists, or archaeologists, or astronomers, or um, just different in relation to our um, popular culture, which is actually in the influence of the Kali Yuga, like I just mentioned in that um, in that weather report. Um, yeah, yeah, he's so, so he's taking them all from that, uh, it's in relation to those, um, scholars that he's giving the, uh, I guess you could call it like a backlash or whatever, something like that, like the, um, what, what those, so, if you can understand, so say we're taking the, um, the existence of an ancient civilization. Um, once you've read a decent chunk of this book, it, it seems insane to actually consider anything other than the fact that there was this ancient civilization in our distant past that actually was the origin of the um, of the scriptures, the Vedas. Um, he's mainly talking about the Vedas, and um, yeah, yeah, so, I mean, it seems, yeah, it seems, um, yeah, it's silly to consider anything else, but he, but he's always speaking in the context of, okay, but a lot of people don't know this, aren't aware of this, and that's in relation to scholars in particular, what is deemed, and then I guess with, on the, I guess what, what he's saying is it kind of comes back down to into the main into the mainstream culture and stuff what is meant to to have been officially decided is ends up back in the mainstream culture so i guess it's sort of a um revolutionary sort of book you could say um because it's it's sort of showing how the views of the popular culture are actually wrong and but giving really good evidence as to why they're wrong with proper arguments to the point where it's to any open-minded reader it, it really seems ridiculous um, to consider anything else than the points that he's arguing if you, if you read the whole book, if you read it and just follow through everything that he says. But, um, I just thought I could look at a few different ones of the subjects and just talk about them or something. Um, just to give you an idea. Like, um, a lot of it's archaeological research, the Indus Valley Breakthrough, yeah, a lot of stuff on archaeology like covering um, different archaeological breakthroughs that have happened, um, different findings from around the globe in relation to like archaeological findings in India as well as in um, the Mayan culture or the um, he talks about the pyramids as well, di different things that have been um, discovered from around the world. Um, um, a lot of it, the, one of the major themes is about the actual Vedas themselves, which is the texts of India, the Vedic texts of India. Um, 
Um, just have a look at each one of these kind of main subjects. Yeah, a lot uh, big themes about um, consciousness, really, because a lot of, according to the scientific um, paradigm, um, under say something like the um, the authority of scientists in terms of physics or something, that they could come to some kind of overall understanding of everything based just on physics, but the obvious missing element that they can't get their um, their hands on within that framework of studying material stuff is consciousness itself and the fact that the scientists have consciousness and that um, we as humans and living beings all have consciousness and that's how he puts it like a subject that isn't actually confronted within the scientific world whereas um, in the Vedic viewpoint that's what it really is most masterful at it really um, although it covers a lot of different things it's also very detailed in its descriptions of consciousness and obviously of um, the individual's relation to the supreme consciousness um, so, soul search, yeah, I'm just sort of going through, hidden human history. Yeah, a lot of it's about history and stuff, going back through what's um, what's actually wrong with our historical record, and he talks about how the Indian historical record is actually really hard to... Well, actually, it's not as hard to keep track of if you read the Vedic material itself that gives, a, like, one of the Vedic texts is called Histories, you have like the histories and the Puranas. So if you accept the authority of those, then there is a history that's given in, in India. But um, otherwise, uh, other histories and stuff all trying to match up. And yeah. Um, yeah, he talks, there's some really good history stuff and in, in how... Um, to do with the politics that all happened during the time that, especially about when Britain invaded um, India and how a lot of that sort of racial prejudice and um, European superiority actually influenced a lot of the scholars that laid down a lot of the foundational principles of things such as um, um, the linguistic analysis of the Vedas and stuff, the linguistic analysis or whatever, like um, different areas of study that were influenced from their beginning because there were political motivations for them being laid down and then those standards were up, upheld even though in, in pretext they were it was denied that those influences were still there. He sort of explains that they have a long, uh, they they kind of stick. It's really hard to break the old habits of those early things, but sort of implies that there's new kinds of researches and stuff that are coming out these days that are more apt to actually like just flip the whole thing over and just like say well let's just start afresh like there's a lot of um, assumptions in all of these um, areas of study that need that um, the whole field can kind of be overturned with some of this new information that's there so um, this is this is my book review <laughs> um, 
legacy of the British Empire. Yeah. Um. And what else? Life and death, the will of Samsara. You sort of, he mentions like, um, um, he's talking about how basically the idea in the Vedas isn't just to describe material creation or what's around us here. It's actually its goal is to get us right out of the whole thing altogether and um, either by a gradual development over a few lives or something like that to get to the spiritual world itself or else a, a really strong committed effort in one lifetime to actually escape what's called samsara or the cycle of birth and death or the the material creation um stuff near death experiences a routine affair so that's talking about how many near death experiences have actually been um documented these days and how that's actually quite well known that there are all these near-death experiences and stuff so so he talks about that quite a lot in there um, well reincarnation there was a really interesting point in there about um, where he said it actually mentioned that in Christianity in the early years of Christianity for about the first 300 years or so um, reincarnation was actually a standard accepted part of Christianity so that's quite interesting in relation to reincarnation it wasn't actually until later when they made some decisions based on overturning one of the early preceptors of the church and and they got rid of a lot of the things that he said or prescribed which actually included the reincarnation aspect to Christianity itself so that's quite interesting to see that even within the Christian church originally reincarnation was accepted as uh, he also explains reincarnation is accepted in pretty much all traditions around the world um, even in Islam, the if you look at the um, the Sufis, then the Sufis are like the aspect of that tradition that are open to the idea of reincarnation, and also in um, um, native cultures and stuff like that as well. So that's that's interesting. Looking at reincarnation and. Um. Yeah, he has little excerpts of like the um, the Vedic material sort of in there as well, which is really good. I think this book would make a really good introduction as well if you've never read Bhagavad Gita or. Um, or Srimad Bhagavatam or anything and you just want something to like give you a good grounding like a good grounding but also introduce you to like little pieces of those texts just so that you get a feel for what they're about but with a nice lead into it and stuff he it's quite a good book for that because it, there is still quite a lot of quotes and stuff in here um, missing humans um, oh yeah there he's talking about the Aryans which is actually with how um, Aryan became a term which was supposedly about a race and stuff which we know from 
Nazi Germany and stuff, how they were talking about the Aryans, but actually Aryan is a completely different term to that. It doesn't denote a race or anything. It actually denotes, um, uh, like, how he says is like a qualification. It's like a spiritual qualification, or you could say a state of consciousness. An Aryan is like a highly, uh, spiritual, um, civilized being, in a, the other one, like a non Aryan is like a, is just, um, not, not in the right in regards to, say, that culture that the original Vedic culture was, in other words, to a spiritual culture, so he talks about that in relation to, like, theories that people have had about, invaders and stuff like this and all this stuff about that there were wars that happened in um in india's history to do with aryans fighting the ones that weren't aryans and how it was all this big thing but if you understand that aryan actually just is talking about spiritual culture then the reading of it is completely different because aryan an aryan fighting a non-aryan is that's a spiritual um that's a spiritual battle Though those things, the scriptures work on multiple levels, and those things have spiritual correlations on higher dimensions, if you want to call them that. They're higher levels of um, depth of the text, which is uh, in elevated consciousness. Not actually, it's nothing to do with a with a history. That's such a bad. It's just a really bad reading. Um, So, consciousness determines bodily form. I'm only going to do this for half an hour, so there'll be five more minutes. Consciousness determines bodily form. Um, yeah. Oh, that's just talking about how consciousness actually affects the form, affects biology, which is mostly seen in terms of uh, reincarnation, how your consciousness can determine the type of form of body that you get, but also how that can work within uh, one lifetime and stuff, how there's a correlation between bodily form and consciousness and that a, ch a child is different from an adult, and an adult's different from an old man as well. So, that's related to that. Um, what else? Um, Yeah, something that was interesting here on writing, it actually mentioned um, how sometimes writing is actually considered to be like a, a good thing, like um, uh, the development of when writing appeared and our oh, ancient cultures weren't as good because they couldn't read or write, but um, actually there's reference to when Thoth, Thoth is the Egyptian god who's attributed to inventing writing, but actually the example given is that there's, Thoth says, um, you know, this is this great thing, writing, and it will improve the abilities of man or whatever, and actually the, the other god, god with a lower g, um, says, um, something about how terrible writing actually is and says it, it will actually diminish the memory capacity of human beings and it will do all these things so actually writing wasn't was how he even puts it in here is that it's more of a sign of a quality of a lowering of consciousness of the civilization as opposed to a good thing and that's backed up in swedenborg's writings as well where he mentions um um that books, books are actually um, particular to earth, that um, angels in heaven and stuff find it curious that we actually use books or written word, so that's actually a little interesting thing as well. So, um, 
Yeah, yeah, I'll just stop here, I'll do a little bit more chanting, and then I just sort of skip read through about that much, which is how much I've read. I could do another video and just go through a little bit more, but that's just a brief overview of some of the different ideas. I'm mainly just sort of drawing interest to this book because it's really worth reading. That's it there, Searching for Vedic India by Devamrita Swami. It's actually a more much more exciting read than what my presentation is. <laughs> That's really good. <clears throat> okay. Thanks for listening.